Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and this is our daily card reading for April 13th, 2021. So today we have Red Jasper Take Action and it's like Christmas colors. <laughs> Red Jasper Take Action and Aventurine Create Your Own Luck with clarity, with the practice that you choose to engage in, with the spiritual understandings. Maybe you're reading books on spiritual concepts uh, or any kind of, you know, you know, tablets or what is it? The Emerald Tablets and um, the Book of the Essenes, you know, anything like that, the Book of Enoch, you know, if you're reading and studying and trying to understand, remember that any kind of knowledge you're taking in, they're even saying right now, it's one tiny fragment of the whole. It's one perception. Okay, so that seemed like that was very important for someone to hear. So there you go. So Red Jasper is very grounding. Green uh, Aventurine obviously is about the heart space and feeling lucky. This might even literally be, and this is like kind of low hanging fruit here, but lucky in love. <laughs> I'm not down on love, honey. The world pulses and breathes through love. That's how we exist. Yes, it's the highest frequency emotion I think we can most of us can get at <laughs> right now at least so this take action means take action to understand the creation of your own reality and again this isn't about working outside in but inside out so when we change how we view things we can't you know just do the practice and then look around and go did it change am i a gazillionaire now Probably not, <laughs> but has your perspective of it changed? How you feel about it, has that changed? Are you more at peace? Where are your motivations? Can you take pleasure in just doing the simplest things? So Red Jasper is about good fortune. Well, aventuring too, you know, creating your own luck. But this is making it manifest. This is bringing it into reality but again what have so many people been preaching about out there hey i manifested this great house i use this example all the time where i've actually heard this a few times where people are like i wanted to manifest a house like actual like law of attraction kinds of content which is beautiful i love it but some of it i want to use it as an example for good reason and you'll see why here in just a moment so when someone is doing law of attraction content People are very interested in this because we want our power back and it taps into a deep wound where something feels like it's missing. And this promise of the law of attraction means that we can recapture it. It means that I can fill that void of something that, you know, I've been missing for so long, right? That void has been there a minute, right? So some of these people come forward and say, oh, I wanted to manifest a house and I really I did my vision board, nothing wrong with the vision board. I just got to take a, a well-rounded approach to manifestation. But I did my vision board and I focused on it every day, like wah, 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 with brain waves and stuff. And, <laughs> and look at where I live now. I live in this beautiful house. But you find out it's not theirs. Like they manifested a place to live and that's all well and good. But because it's not theirs, it's a temporary manifestation. You see where I'm going with this? And that's not a bad thing. If that's all you're working towards, wonderful. But, I mean, you can go rent a mansion <laughs> and film there and try to pretend like it's yours. What do you really want? Do you want something that is yours and not going to be taken away? That something that's anchored? That's what we're getting at here. Okay, be careful with manifestations. I'll, I'll give this cautionary tale years and years and years ago. Once upon a time, okay, it was a dark and stormy night. I got all of them. I got them all like ready to go here, <laughs> locked and loaded. But I was going through a hard, I came out of a, a very abusive relationship. I was trying to heal. I got to a place where I was like, oh, the solution to my pain isn't just continuing to heal myself. It's to manifest new love, right? So I went with the very surface level way of manifesting. I want him to look like this and this and this, and I want him to be from somewhere else. And, you know, I wanted this, all the stuff. And 
That person freaked me out. It took about two months. That person showed up. And I was like, Lord, <laughs> what? And even someone who knew about the manifestation that I was doing, she got quite a kick out of it too. She was amazed. And this is part of the draw of this law of attraction, the way we understand it is it's a parlor trick in a way. I'm sorry for some of you out there who are like hardcore, like, no, I love law of attraction and I feel really connected to it. And that's all well and good. We just need to understand how deep it goes, right? Because I didn't do that in this situation. And guess what happened? This person showed up and was not available on many levels. Because who the heck thinks to put down, hey, don't be married. Or hey, be emotionally available. Hey, don't be keeping your options all open. You know, I've, I'm sure all of us have some example, especially with love, you know, having that love show up and we forgot a few of the details. Right? So that is a part of us, this manifestation and creating your own luck and bringing it into the physical. We gotta be careful. Yes, so make sure you're coming from the heart space as well. And when you tap into, you know, using the law of attraction and tapping into this frequency, understand what you're doing. It's not just a buzz term. You're tapping into the field. You're tapping into your consciousness. You are, whatever, I mean, you're tapping into all these parts of you that from what I've seen, maybe we don't all really get. We don't get it. What was that one movie with Mickey Mouse and he's the wizard? (laughs) Or you can, you know, whatever kind of, you know, analogy we want to use. You wouldn't, you know, give a sword to a drunk person, right? I mean, don't, don't do that. I'm not saying that law of attraction people (laughs) I got to watch what I'm saying. I'm not trying to imply that, but we need to have a wider and deeper understanding of what we're asking for. And here's the kicker. And this is why it's not so popular. First of all, it takes some of the glow off the fascination of law of attraction when we truly tap into what is right for us. What would be a lucky, fortunate, beautiful thing that we can manifest in the physical and we go deep and we go, hmm. Maybe I don't want that. Maybe, no, maybe I don't want a mansion. No, that would be awful because it would just be like a lot of empty rooms and it would feel wasteful. And who knows who's going to be cleaning this nonsense, right? (laughs) And you might say, no, my dream home actually is a smaller house that feels cozy. And maybe it's around nature. And see, that's what I'm talking about. When you go deeper with what you're trying to manifest, you'll find that a lot of the stuff that in your brain you thought you wanted, in your mind you thought you wanted this, starts to go away. And now you can bring it from the heart space. You can bring in something that's really good for your soul growth. Uh, It might be really great for you to be in a smaller town with a more affordable house instead of trying to own, uh, I don't know, like a brownstone in New York City. Maybe you will get more peace and quiet and understanding and less stress of how you're going to afford it. You see what I'm getting at here? So this is how you can create your own luck, but you need to be a little bit careful about it. And that might mean that what you want hasn't come yet. And one of the big things that people love to throw at me (laughs) um, and to be diminishing about, these are the cabochons in case you're wondering what the heck's going on. is to say, well, Michelle, you aren't in a house. You are blah, 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 you know, saying all these things. Because when I go in and I manifest, I feel a sense, let's take the house, for example. I've been like, oh, I just want a house. I I know exactly what spot I want. Trust and believe, honey, because it's right next to the mountain. It's not in the mountains, but it's right next to the mountain. And I just love having that access. And if I do end up manifesting that, guys, that's going to be the new backdrop for all the videos. Just the beautiful nature outside. Put some good energy into it, okay? But <laughs> when I tap in, um, being in an apartment as a single woman, there's something very deep there where I'm like, you know what? I feel less lonely in an apartment complex. I share walls with people. If I were in a house, would I feel as good about that? I don't know. And I keep feeling like there's something that is still imperative about me being in this kind of space. And it doesn't make sense to my brain, but I trust it and go, no, when it's time, it'll be fine. Well, okay, I'll give you another example. We get hail damage here in Colorado Springs, something fierce. 
when they redo the roof of this apartment complex, somebody just takes care of it. I didn't have to call nobody. <laughs> Excuse me. I didn't have to call anybody. <laughs> There's somebody out there who's really bothered that I just said that incorrectly. Um, <laughs> but if I were in a house, ooh, how would I even begin to find a roofer to take care of that? And you know what I'm saying? So just remember that. Again, I'm offering that for good reason. Because if you're trying to manifest something because you think it's the dream, tap into your heart. Your heart's going to tell you something else. It's going to help you understand your real dream. So you have Archangel Zadkiel, Archangel Shamuel. What, oh, hi. <laughs> what do you really love? And how can you get yourself into a vibrational space where it's the most appropriate for you? Yes. And your passion will take you there. That's Archangel Uriel. And find the beauty of what is. Don't keep striving. Hiding. Hiding the truth. <laughs> okay. Here's why I think this is funny. You may not agree, but I think it's hilarious because you're hiding what you really want. You're hiding what you really want, what your true passion is. You don't see yourself as beautiful. You don't see your situation as beautiful because you've been conditioned to think that simple is bad. Bigger is better. Fancier is better. What is your actual truth? You're hiding your own truth. So transmute all of that. Tap into your fullest potential here. Tap into what you love. I keep joking that when I can afford it, when I do get a house, y'all better believe I'm going to have one of those hanging swing things and I want it completely tricked out. I want it to have like solar panels, bird deterrence. That's going to be a thing. I, I don't know how, but you know, got to make that happen. And it's got to have like, <laughs> don't laugh at me, light therapy and meditation. It's going to be my meditation pod. I think. I don't know. Check with me when we get there. I might be like, this is a dumb idea. I don't want to do this. <laughs> but that's how you're going to be able to bring things in. So this, let this be the focus for today. Where can you bring beauty? Think, focus on beauty, the feeling of what you want to experience, and then let the vision of that come forward. Not what everybody else tells you you should want. All right. So we're going to leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care. Bye-bye.